Okay, welcome. We're doing uh, the tank game today. This is our first day on the tank game. And we're going to take a look at a relationship that we've used in the past. What we're going to do is, I'm not going to go through the whole game step by step. I'm just going to kind of touch upon some of the more difficult things in the game. In this game, we have a, another parent-child relationship. This one's kind of weird, though, because both tanks, there's a player one tank and there's a player two tank, they're both children of the, of the tank parent. Uh, even though they're fighting against each other, they do sh share some uh, similar behavior. So we're going to put that in par parent tank. Uh, so let's do the sprites. Well, we don't really need to do a sprite for the parent tank because, again, it's you're never going to create a parent tank. You're only going to create the ch children t tank. So let's do that first. We'll call this object parent tank. I guess in the book they call it object tank parent. Okay, it doesn't take a sprite because again it's never going to be uh, created, it's never going to be instantiated. Um, in the create event, we want to set the friction of the tank. That's here. We have a new setting here. It's uh, set friction. It's on the uh, move tab, uh, tab over here on the right. Uh, we want to set the friction to 0 0.5. And what we're trying to do is uh, make it look like when you give power to the tank, if you lift up from the key that makes it go forward, it's going to slowly slide to a stop because there's friction on the object. It's just not going to bounce around forever. Okay? So this is a little bit more realistic when, when it comes to tank movement. Okay, so set that to 3 or 0 0.5. Don't, don't click on relative. Um, what else do we need to do here? Um, yeah, we can put a couple of collisions in here. Uh, if we collide with the wall or if we collide with another tank, we just want to kind of bounce off the wall. And the way to do that is just invert the speed, which is kind of strange. But let's say uh, we have a collision with, well, object tank parent. This is odd. Why would it collide with itself? Remember that both tanks are going to be uh, derived from the same parent. So this can happen. One the other tank you're crashing into, well, it's a child of tank parent just like this one is. So there is a situation where two, two tanks that were children of the parent tank actually collide together. Uh, what do we do when that happens? Uh, we do, I think we do a change variable. And we want to set the variable speed. And this is kind of weird, to negative speed. Okay, So when you crash into a wall or crash into another tank, uh, basically you just want to go bouncing backwards. Now, what will happen once you bounce off the wall is you'll slide to a stop because of the friction that we set up. Okay. So we'll go with that. Uh, we do also need to cr uh, be able to crash into walls, and there's two different types of walls in this game. There's a wall that's solid that doesn't move, and there's a, another wall that if you shoot it, it disappears for a while, but then it comes back after a certain amount of time. Let's create the sprites for that. So I'm going to call this uh, sprite wall 1, or just like that, I guess. Let's load that sprite. Where are these sprites located? Um, they're out in the shared folder. Here's tank war, and uh, we just want the wall sprite. Now, typically on walls, you don't remove the background because they're a solid block. There is no really back, isn't a background on the block, so you can just undo that. And um, I think that's fine. Don't want to center it; just leave it like it is. And then we'll create the other uh, wall. And this is the wall that can uh, be destroyed. So it looks like a little, a little bit more cracked and it's a little do darker. Also, don't check that for this wall as well. So we have our sprites for our walls. We can create the objects now for the walls. Check our sprite. We'll make that solid. And here's uh, wall two.
and we'll make that solid as well. Even though it, it can disappear, we're still going to make it solid. All right. Now we have uh, two tank sprites. Uh, we're just, I'm going to do the first one, and you can do the second one. Uh, here's the first one. Now, to me, the tank sprites, they look pretty much the same. And so I would do something to them to make them a little bit more uh, discernible. You can tell, tell whether which one is tank one and one's tank two. The, the sprites they give you are different, but they're not different enough to really kind of differentiate that. Okay, so let's find tank one. Here's tank one. Notice uh, it's one of those that uh, has an animation. It has 60 frames in it. Very strange. Uh, so we're not using the animation to actually animate the object. We're using the animation each frame to, to set the direction of which way the tank would go if you would uh, depress the forward key. So uh, remove back background on that. Say open. Okay. And again, how many, how many uh, Im sub images do we have? We have 60. And each one rotates counterclockwise, 6 degrees. So six, th 360 divided by 6 will give you 60 different directions to choose from. That seems pretty complete. Okay. Okay. Let's create our first tank then. Okay. We'll call this tank 1. We're going to use our new tank sprite. But this is the important part. Uh, we want to make sure that the parent to the tank is set to object tank parent. Now that we have that here, we've already got the collision set up to bounce off the wall. We want to do the same thing if we hit uh, any of the walls, or I guess that's to bounce off another tank. But we also want to do the vent when it hits a wall. So we'll just say object uh, will collide with object wall and we'll do the same thing we're gonna take the speed variable and set it equal to negative speed and I'll just uh, bounce it off the wall so these two are the same now so we don't have to put in multiple wall collisions we can go into object wall 2 and uh, set it set the parent for that to object wall 1 that way, you don't have to do more than one collision with the wall. So it looks like I misspelled the tank here, so let me fix that. There we go. That's better. We're in tank one. Here we put the collision events in. Uh, now we can get, give this a try. If we look at our tank sprite, we see that our width and height is 64. That's one of the largest sprites we have. Um, same thing with the walls. Well, the walls are 32. Hmm. But the tank is twice as big. So we probably should set our grid size based on the size of the walls. So that make it easier to draw the room. So let's do that. Here's our room. Now in this game, uh, the playing, or the thing you'll see on the screen is a lot s smaller than the whole playing area. The, the playing area is rather large. But for our first test room, we're going to make it kind of small uh, just to start with. So we're going to use the size of the walls to set the, the grid size. Okay. And now we can start painting in walls. Here's a, here's a trick. If you hold down the shift key and then the left uh, mouse button, you can paint them on. If you miss a few, you can just right click. It gets rid of them. So that's just to keep them in the arena, and then we might put the other type of wall in here and there. I want to change to the other type of wall. This is just the test room, so I'm just uh, putting things in there randomly. This is a pretty tight fit, so it might be better. We can also put our tank in the room. So here's our tank, and that's a pretty good start to the room. 
What I'd like to do is um, just implement one of the directions going forward, and then I'll let you uh, take a look at the book to figure out the other directions. Now, since there's going to be two sets of keys to drive the tanks, one is going to be on the left side of the keyboard, ASDW. You'll fire, I think, with your space bar. Uh, on the other side is going to be the arrow keys. So I'm going to do the left, the left side of the keyboard first. So forward would be W. So I'm going to add a W uh, keyboard event. And this would be uh, letters this time. So how do we go forward? All right, so what we want to do is uh, limit the tank to go only eight pixels at a time. That's what's going to be its highest speed, basically a speed limit for the tank. So we have to ask a question. Uh, first, we have to ask, all right, so we're going to grab this right here. The variable we're going to test is speed again. Uh, and we want to see if it's smaller than eight. If it's smaller than 8, then what we're going to do is we're going to increase the speed by 1. But if it's 8 or larger, then it won't let you actually increase the speed. So your, your tank's going to be limited to a speed of 8. So here we would say, again, the variable speed. And we're going to say 1. We're going to say relative. So let's give this a try. Okay, the first problem we see is uh, the tank is spinning, but I am bouncing off the wall. That's good. So we have to remember when we uh, first create the tank is to shut off the animation because we're really not using the frames in the sprite as an animation. We want to just use it to set the direction. So here in tank one then, in its create event, we say create. First thing we want to do there is call the object tank's parent's create event, because that's going to set the friction. So here then, in the create event for tank 1, first we have to call the parent event. That's one we haven't used before, I don't think. Over here it says call parent event. So what that means is call the, the create event in the parent, and then do the stuff here for the tank 1. And in here, we're going to set the, we're going to say change sprite. We're really not changing the sprite, we're just stopping it from spinning. Well, we'll say tank one, and the speed we'll set to zero. Okay. So let's give this a try. Here I go. It's not spinning anymore, and I bounce off the wall. Now, uh, to go backwards, similar, just change the eight to negative eight. Uh, what's setting our direction? Well, we happen to have the, the tank oriented in the direction, the default direction, which would be zero. To change the directions, you're going to have to use the left and right keys, but I'm going to let you do that out of the book. I just wanted to make sure that you got this uh, good start with the tank parent. So your, your next task would be create a sprite for tank 2, make tank 2 also a child of object tank parent. So in tank 2, like this one, we set the uh, parent to right there, to object tank parent. And then instead of uh, the W key, replace that with the up arrow. And that will give us a, a f forward uh, speed. That should be enough to keep you busy um, for today.